Hi, welcome back to our channel. Today, we will be covering the 3 Newton laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object will continue its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless a resultant force acts on it. In layman terms, if the resultant force on an object is zero, its speed and direction remains the same, or if it is stationary, it will remain stationary. Let's look at an example. A parachutist is falling at constant terminal velocity. Let's draw the forces acting on the parachutist. We got his weight pointing downwards and air resistance acting upwards. Notice that the magnitude of both forces are equal, cancelling each other out. We can therefore conclude that net force on the parachutist is zero. And applying Newton's first law, the parachutist will continue his state of uniform motion in a straight line, which explains why he is falling at a constant terminal velocity. Next, we have Newton's second law of motion, which states that the resultant force on an object is the product of its mass and acceleration. I have to emphasize that the force that results in the acceleration of the object is the net force. The net result or resultant of all individual forces combined that were acting on the object. Another point to take note is that acceleration and force are vector quantities with direction associated with them. And so, another property is that the direction of acceleration of the object follows the direction of the resultant force on the object. Let's try an example. Say we have a 4kg steel ball at rest on this tabletop. The ball is being pushed towards the right with a force of 10 newtons, and there is a frictional force of 2 newtons acting against it. Find the acceleration of the ball. By Newton's second law, we know that the mass of the ball multiplied by its acceleration will give us the net force acting on the ball. So first, we will need to find the net force acting on the ball, which is 8 newtons to the right. With the value of this net force, and because we know the mass of the ball, the acceleration on the ball is simply 2 meters per second squared towards the right. Let's try a more challenging example. Here, we have a rocket of mass 100 kilograms accelerating upwards at 2 meters per second squared. It experiences 200 newtons of resistance. What is the force produced by its engine? The first step to every force question is to choose a direction convention. And in this case, we take upwards to be positive. Next. Let's draw the free body diagram of all forces acting on the rocket. We have the force of the engine acting outwards, which we are tasked to find, the resistive force of 200 newtons acting downwards, and the weight of the rocket which is given by 100 kilograms multiplied by the gravitational acceleration of 10 to give us 1000 newtons acting downwards. With this diagram, let's come up with the net force equation. The net force acting on the rocket is just the summation of all three forces taking into account their direction. Note that weight and resistive force carry negative signs as they are pointing downwards. Remember that we are tasked to find the force produced by the engine. Let's assign the respective values to the forces. And we realize we still have to find the value of the net force. Remember Newton's second law of motion. We know that the net force on the rocket is given by its mass multiplied by its acceleration, which we know both values. Multiplying them together gives a net force of positive 200 newtons, hence pointing upwards. Now we are able to calculate the force of the engine, giving us positive 1400 newtons, meaning the engine produces a force of 1400 newtons upwards. Now that we have covered both Newton's first and second law, I just want to briefly touch on the concept of inertia, which is the tendency of an object to resist a change in its state of rest or motion. You will realize that it ties in closely with Newton's first law, which states that an object will continue its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless a resultant force acts on it. Meaning to say that without a resultant force acting on the object, the object will never change its state of rest or motion, which is essentially inertia. We can see this playing out on a moving bullet in space. It will continue moving forever since net force acting on it is zero. Next. Another property is that the greater the mass of an object, the greater its inertia. We see this in daily life all the time. A heavier object will be more difficult to move or stop when it's moving. This ties in nicely with Newton's second law of motion, 
which states that the resultant force on an object is the product of its mass and acceleration. The higher the mass of an object, with the same amount of net force, will result in a smaller acceleration. And hence, it will be much more difficult to change the motion of a heavier object. Next up, Newton's third law of motion states that if body A exerts a force on body B, body B will exert an equal and opposite force back on body A. In layman terms, if body A exerts a force towards the right on body B, body B will also exert an equal and opposite force towards the left back on body A. These two forces are called action-reaction forces. And note that both forces act on different balls. In this scenario, the car drives towards the ball and collides with it. The two arrows show the action-reaction forces. Action-reaction pairs have the following characteristics. And as we can see, both forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. An important thing to note is that action-reaction pairs must act on different objects. And as such, they do not cancel each other out. Notice the grey green arrow is acting on the ball, while the white arrow is acting on the car. Lastly, they are both the same type of forces, both being contact forces. In another scenario, we have a ball resting on the tabletop. Let's identify the action-reaction forces present. Forces acting on the ball are its weight and the normal contact force exerted by the tabletop. So, are they action-reaction forces? Let's check them against the four characteristics of action-reaction forces. Both forces have equal magnitude and are opposite in direction. However, they do not act on different objects. In fact, both the weight and the normal contact force acts on the ball, cancelling each other out. And they aren't the same type of forces either, with weight being a gravitational force and a normal force being a contact force. And hence, weight and normal force on the ball are not action-reaction pairs. So what are the action-reaction forces? Weight of the ball is essentially gravitational force acting on the ball by the earth. So the reaction force will just be the gravitational force acting on the earth by the ball. Both forces are similar in magnitude and opposite in direction. They both act on different objects as well. One gravitational force acting on the ball, which is the weight of the ball, and the other gravitational force acting on the earth. They are both same types of forces, both being gravitational forces. And with that, this wraps up our video on the Newton's laws of motion. If you have learned something, do smash that like button and remember to subscribe for more videos like this. Also, visit our website and Instagram. Links are provided down below. With that, thanks for watching and see you soon.